All right, so this is going to be a quick little Roll20 tutorial video. Just a couple tips uh, that I've learned to help some people out. The first thing we're going to go over is giving tokens health bars. Uh, you might want to give everyone's tokens health bars that everyone can see because, you know, players communicating, like, oh, how much health are you at? Oh, I'm at this amount. Like, oh, do you need a heal, et cetera, et cetera. It can be really tedious and kind of, uh, you know, it gets old pretty fast in the middle of combat in D&D. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to give Krokgar here, we're going to drag his token out, give him a health bar that all of his allies can see. So how we're going to do that is we're going to double click on him. That brings up the edit token menu. We see that it represents character Krokgar. That's very important that you have that set correctly. If it's not set correctly, uh, you can just use the drop down menu here to uh, do all that. So we're going to go over to this drop down menu here. You can use any of these bars. I'm just going to use bar one. Drop down menu here. Scroll down till you find HP. There's HP. We're going to click it. And Krokgar's health comes out. He's currently 60 out of 126. So not doing too hot. We're going to save changes. And we can see, yep, he's, uh, he's half health right now. A little bit under half. Not doing the best right now. But his allies can't see that. They can't see his health bar right now, so we're going to fix that. We're going to double-click on him again. We're going to go to Advanced. And we are going to the, choose the HP bar that we set, so bar 1 in my case. And I'm going to click the C checkbox. That allows everyone to see it. Now, what they will see is this. His allies will see this. They will see his bar. It's a little bit under half, so they can see that he's injured. This is if you, you know, might be concerned with some metagaming. You don't want your players talking about specific HP numbers, rather just the condition of the party. Uh, this is really useful. If you don't really care about uh, metagaming in that way, and you are fine with people uh, using specific numbers, like me, uh, you want to use this text overlay and visible to everyone. And now everyone can see that he is exactly 60 HP out of 126. And if you want only Krokgar to be able to see his actual health numbers, but everyone else see the bar, the default setting is visible to editors. And so now I can see it because I'm the DM of this game, and Krokgar will be able to see his exact health numbers, but everyone else will just see the bar, no numbers. All right, the next thing we're going to do real quick is movement. So movement in Roll20 can be kind of tedious at times. You know, maybe you want to move 30 feet. So you take out your measuring tool here and you measure out. It's like, okay, that's 30 feet. And so you got to come back up here, get the select and move tool, bring Krokgar over and, uh, hmm, which square was it? Not positive because I can't eyeball it. All these squares look the same. And you can, you know, select the token and then use the arrow keys like, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, but that gets really tedious. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use this little method here where we are going to take our mouse and we are going to hold down left click on Krokgar. Right, that also pinged. That's not important. You can see that Krokgar is selected and I have my left mouse button held down. So if I move Krokgar, he comes with me, comes with my mouse, but there's a little version of him left. You can see, so we can move him down over like this. You know how you'd normally move a token. Now, while doing this, moving him all around, I can. I'm going to, once on my keyboard, tap the Q button. That will add a little ruler attached to the token so we can see exactly how far we're moving. So if I want to move 30 feet from this position, I can measure out exactly 30 feet and drop him. Again, just hold down left click on the token, tap Q once, which will bring up the ruler, and then move. Now, let's say I wanted to move like around a corner. Well, if I did the usual method, if I wanted to move, if Crocker wanted to move in here, yeah, I mean, that's through a wall, so that doesn't really measure it properly. So what I do is I do the same. I would uh, hold down left click, move him a little bit, press Q once to get the ruler, and then I'll bring him up 
15 feet, because that's where he will then enter this little uh, little tunnel divide here. Move him up 15 feet. Hit Q again, which will leave a little waypoint. And then I can move him, his total movement of 30 feet, right in there. That measures it out. If I want to move back to my original position the next turn. Left click, move him a little bit. Hold down left click, press Q once. Move him out, 15 feet. Hit Q again. Move him down. There we go. So if I hold down left click, move him a tiny bit, and then hold down Q, that will leave a waypoint at every single spot, which normally is not what you want. Not only because it's kind of annoying to have all those waypoints there, it's kind of unnecessary. It'll also cause some lag in your game, and they'll see the token moving slowly to each waypoint. The waypoints will stay there in the line and everything. Uh, it can get a little annoying. So you normally don't want to do that. Yep, so that's everything I wanted to talk about in this little video. Uh, if you want to know something else, maybe something else that could improve your game or your quality of life with Roll20, let me know. Maybe I figured it out and can tell you. I don't know. All right, that's all for now. Later.